Hello and welcome to the Europa League and the 100th episode of the Swindon Town Swoodley Poopers March to Greatness. Look at those boys. Uh, if they look tired, that's because they played yesterday. And you might remember that when they played yesterday, I did not have any players to play because they are all exhausted. So today they are even more exhausted. Um, I am surprised that they are even able to wave at the crowd. But we are in the semifinals of the Europa League. We're playing Fenerbahce. Uh, they're from Istanbul. Uh, they're very good. Um, I know they're very good because th I see a lot of highlights of them. They also have very loud and supportive uh, fans who do a lot of uh, jumping around and hilarious um, makings of the songs. So credit to uh, to them and to, to their club and to their supporters, but uh, I hope that we beat the crap out of them. It's been a disappointing season for the Swindon Town Swoodley Poopers. There's no two ways about it. We're only six points clear of the relegation zone in the Premier League. Um, but, you know, it's also our first season in the Premier League, and traditionally clubs have a very difficult first season. A lot of, a lot of them go back down. So I'm proud of our boys even for being where they are um, and certainly for being in the finals of the FA Cup and the semifinals of the Europa League. It's extraordinary. It's an extraordinary accomplishment, and I'm really proud of them. We're starting three uh, forwards today, all exhausted, but... Um, but we don't have um, the teammates of John Green and John Green, teammates in life and in love up front, because uh, ball John Green uh, would be starting this game in the red, which is too low. I'm going to try not to use the, uh, the turbo key at all today, if I can avoid it. Um, up, up, and we're back. Um, but uh, I'm definitely pretty nervous. Uh, as for what I'm going to talk about today, I'm going to talk about whether I think YA fiction gives young women an unrealistic... Uh, an un unrealistic uh, ideas about love. Um, but I'm going to answer that question more broadly because I think it's really kind of offensive to, like, that particular formulation of the question is so fat, Lucas! Oh, fat Lucas. Fat Lucas, why did you, why, I, I mean, I have to say, it's a questionable managerial decision by me to start Fat Lucas because he's not our best keeper. Um, I thought that he would be the emotional spark we needed, but instead we're down 1-0 in the 10th minute. Now, bear in mind that what we really need this game is an away goal um, because you will remember from previous your previous experiences with the Europa League that um, it's a home-and-away match. It's, it's two basically two matches. Get up. Um, basically, two matches are played. Um, we play one at home and one away. Well, we're starting away this time, which me which is kind of good for us. Leroy Williamson, exhausted, falling. Oh no, that's Voluptuous Bear card, falling to the ground, exhausted. Um, so we're playing we're playing two matches, uh, and if we get an away goal, even if it, even if it ends up being a tie one one, if we get that nil nil victory that we're fa famous for in the second game, um, we will move on to the finals. Go. Oh! But, I mean, there is, it is an open question as to whether we really do or do not have the club to achieve that because, I mean, these boys, look at them. They're just, they're out on their feet, basically. Um, they're try oh, it's just getting schooled. Um, it also should be noted that Fenerbahce is a lot better than we are. Um, but it'd be great to move on just for the financial health of the club. Like, next, next year, obviously, we're going to need some new players because we just, we, we, need, we, don't need, we don't need to get rid of anybody. We just need more players. Um, yeah, but to your question about Fat Lucas, whew, to your question about whether I think YA fiction gives girls unrealistic ideas about romantic relationships, first I would say that I don't think it's specific to girls, um, and I certainly don't think that it's specific to YA fiction. Like, I mean, all romance fiction gives people unrealistic ideas about romantic relationships, right? Because in romance fiction, the, the men are always, like, both sensitive and caring, and, oh, we've got an injury. Oh, Schnurgerberg, that's the last thing I can handle. I cannot handle an injury. Oh, just, can we, is he up? Is he up? Can I, I'm going to take a look, make sure he's okay. This is just, it's just epic. Oh, he's injured. He's down to a 56. Oh, sweet mama. I'm bringing in Leroy Williamson. I got to take out other John Green. Look at him, he's got nothing left. But who am I going to bring in? Ball John Green? I can't do that till halftime. I gotta wait till halftime on that one. Oh, I mean these guys, they're just they're trying so hard, but they've just they've got nothing left. Stone Cold Steve with the C Austin is injured. 
unfortunately. So we're going to have to bring on uh, Leroy Williamson, who does score occasionally on the upside. Uh, if you're so injured, how come you're walking off with such ease, Stone Cold Steve with the C Austin? I haven't been impressed with this performance at all this year. Been injured half the freaking year. Oh, great job there. And then he runs it out of bounds. Um, so does fiction give women or, and men an unrealistic portrayal of, um, of romance? Well, sure, but it also gives men and women unrealistic portrayals of all kinds of other things like war and, um, and you know, death and friendship and every other kind of relationship. Fiction isn't really in the business of being um, realistic, or at least not exclusively in that business. Um, I mean, the thing that I find most interesting about fiction uh, is the way that it, the way that it, by heightening by heightening our experiences, it captures something uh, important about our experiences. And I think that's true in in young adult novels about romance, and I think it's definitely true in um, in novels about friendship and everything else. Like we learn about ourselves by by reading. Um, hyper-realized uh, versions of ourselves a, a lot of times. Um, you know, so certainly in, in any novel, you know, and no novel reflects the actual s course of human conversation, or at least very few do, and very few attempt to, because it's not that interesting, right? I mean, that's the biggest, oh, we just needed, I, voluptuous pericard, I need you to get, or Leroy Williamson, whoever's playing back there, I need you to get in there a little faster. Um, get in there a little faster. It's context is everything. I can't believe how many times you guys find, like, context is everything quotes from these Swoodly Poopers videos. You're disgusting. Um, and brilliant. Oh, it needed a better pass. Needed another better pass. You guys got to get around these guys. You got to figure out a way through. We have, we, we have one half left to score. Um, and I cannot overstate the importance of our, of our scoring. Because if we go in with a 1-0, if, if we can just get that blessed away goal, you know? No! Oh! Schnurgerberg! That's really frustrating. Oh, I'm feeling a lot of frustration right now. Yeah, I, yeah, we're asking questions because none of that should have happened. We should have had, we should have had the tying goal. And we shouldn't have given up the goal. Oh, frustrating. Hold on. It might be time. I think it's time to bring in Ball John Green. Oh, look at, I mean, everybody's just, everybody's just exhausted. Look at Fitz Hall, for God's sakes. I guess I can bring in Perry Perry to, in place of Fahey, maybe, or in place of, I don't know. No one's got anything. I got, I mean, I, what am I going to do? Bring in Ricardo Bunsen Berna to, to play in, in the field? I, I mean, I don't, I have nothing. I got nothing. These, these guys, they're just, they've given everything this season. You know, they've worked just extremely, extremely hard. I'm proud of them, but we just don't have a lot left. We just don't have a lot left. Oh, bad passes. Just, this is disappointing. So um, my argument about, like, what, what fiction is supposed to be, um, and I might be wrong, but that's kind of the fun thing about arguing about these things. Um, I, I think that fiction is, is really, at its core, supposed to um, uh, be, like, both an encouragement and a comfort. Uh, that, that fiction is a place where we find sort of both revelation and consolation. Um, and I, I think w most of us as readers understand that what we're reading is, is a story. Um, and that I think that, I think we're not looking for, um, strictly speaking, like truth about these things. Uh, we're looking for consolation and revelation and that, um, that through these, through stories, through, you know, exaggerations and hyper realizations and all that stuff, you can find... Um, something that is go, 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 go. Oh, Schnurgeberg. So close. It just, I mean, if he'd had, if he'd had his regular energy levels, I think he's probably scores there, but he doesn't. And then he just can't. I mean, we're just really struggling here. Um, we just are really, really struggling for goals. Um, so I, I, I think Yes, if people if people expect fiction to, to model perfect ideals of human behavior, um, then then that's one thing. But to me, that's just writing a problem novel where you're like, you're like Jimmy brought a gun to school and he shouldn't have done that because now somebody got shot, and that was sucky. And like that to me is not not the biggest or most interesting thing that a novel can do. Um, 
So I'm still a big believer in, in that sort of hyper-realization. People ask me all the time about, like, either about the dialogue in my novels or about the, uh, do I really think teenagers are that smart? And I do um, think teenagers are, are that smart. But the question I hear the most often, which is just completely insane, is um, do you really think it's realistic that, that Colin Singleton in your novel, An Abundance of Catherines, dated 19 girls named Catherine? And I'm like, of course I don't think it's great save there by Fat Lucas. I'm like, of course I don't think it's realistic. Like... Is there anything more obviously unrealistic in the history of fiction than, I mean, if it's not obvious that I was not going for realism there, I don't really know what to say. Um, yes, of course. It is not realistic to consecutively date 19 girls named Catherine. Like, of course, that's an attempt to be sort of, really, that's what you thought I wanted to do? Not, I don't know. This is really disappointing. And the guys, look, I mean, look at Ball John Green. He's got nothing. He has truly has nothing. But I mean, if I don't if I don't turbo up those runs, I can't make those runs, and there's no other way to get the ball forward. So, I don't know. I don't know. I know I'm doing something wrong. I just don't know what it is. We've got 10 minutes to score. Um, so I think I, basically I would argue that um, that that you know I I'm trying to in my stories at least uh, you know my my priority is always trying to to tell tell a story um, that can be both revelatory and a consolation. Um, my priority is not to try to mimic human speech in any kind of perfect way. Um, and I think that ultimately there's a great tradition in, in, in literature of heightening, heightening those things in the name. Oh, we just almost had it there. In the name of, um, of trying to find, uh, you know, bigger, bigger, bigger truths. Um, you know, that goes back to Shakespeare. People in Elizabethan England did not talk like Shakespeare characters for the record. Um, and... Uh, so, yeah, I certainly didn't, didn't invent this idea, but I am a big believer in it, that literature need not merely be uh, the record of man, but it can also be one of the pillars, one of the props that helps man to endure and prevail, as the great Salinger, I mean, as the great Faulkner put it. Oh! I, said, I, I confused Salinger with Faulkner, and I was punished with a no goal. That was in the 88th minute. That was probably going to be our last chance because we just, I can't even run these guys down. Oh, they're just, now you're just being fancy. You're being mean. Oh, frustration for the swoodly poopers. And it increasingly looks like we're going to go to the second half of the leg with a 1-0 lead, which is not good. Oh, can you not make a pass? Go. Oh, we got a corner. We got a corner right here at the end. Can we bring up everybody, please? Is there any way we can bring up the keeper? We got a corner right here at the end. Come on, boys. Gosh, Mugujg. Oh, I apologize to my friends and my family for the poor performance of the Swoodly Poopers. This is not what anybody wanted to see. We all wanted us to see, to see us go to the European finals. That's going to be very challenging now as we smell our pits in shame because we're going to have to take this very talented Turkish squad to Swindon and find a way to beat them 2-0. All right, best wishes.